Okay, uh, juggling vulnerabilities here. Um, uh, one of the vulnerabilities being uh, I'm out on the trail with uh, heading out to the trail maintenance guys and juggling putting my gloves back on uh, and getting everything set up now. But the vulnerabilities that uh, we want to talk about here in operations are still in terms of initial program load and the um, variations on that theme. Um, IPL, of course, rebooting. Um, again, as mentioned, that's uh, an area, a, a situation where um, you may have to take uh, additional protections for your your data center, your systems, and important system uh, that's dealing with critical processes or sensitive and confidential information. Um, whatever uh, that may be. Um, but the variations... Uh, Nowadays, well, and, and not just nowadays, I mean, some of this stuff goes back. Um, what if you are booting from the network, which you can do? Um, you can specify, okay? Uh, we do not have our operating system, except for the minimal uh, contact that we need to make with the network. Now, given that you have, you know, fairly minimal programming, um, does that cover the uh, possibility of interference with the network uh, load, with uh, proper identification, proper authentication of the, uh, the network node that we are loading the operating system from? Um, do we have um, a specific uh, internet address? Do we have a machine address? Machine addresses, of course, are settable. So, you know, do, if we have a machine address even, um, do we have verification of some type that this is indeed the proper machine that should be giving us this particular address? Um, uh, you know, we, we we haven't really, you know, we, this is initial program load. This is um, booting up. This is getting uh, the operating system, getting the um, uh, the utilities, uh, which we rely on for uh, for well for for communications for network access. Um, this is uh, prior to getting uh, the utilities um, and programming with regard to security. So, you know, again, um, if we are doing uh, the IPL on a particularly sensitive system, maybe uh, we should include in that boot up process sufficient uh, access control functions to get the proper identification and verification in a network situation along with the, the minimum tools to work on the network to, to make a request to start receiving that uh, data I mean it is data until we start running it uh, von Neumann machines there is no difference between data and program. Uh, program is just data that you execute. So, uh, anyways, network situation. Um, boot up from media, and of course we have different types of media. Um, typically, we are booting from the, uh, uh, the hard disk, um, but we could be booting from uh, some kind of removable media. Um, we could be booting uh, these days from uh, CDs or DVDs. 
Uh, we could be booting from um, oh uh, jump drives. Um, and of course we could be booting from firmware. Uh, that tends to be not exactly removable, but uh, with uh, non-volatile memories and the, the variations that we have, um, if that firmware can be flashed, you know, has somebody modified our boot firmware? Do we have uh, systems checking for that, particularly on initial program load? Um, so, you know, what would people want to do? Well, you know, to interfere with and, and modify what we are loading so that they bypass the uh, security functions of uh, our operating system. Um, we, uh, you know, well, as I mentioned, with regard to, to network, you know, um, hijack the... Uh, the server address that we are using uh, with regard to uh, loading the, uh, well, not only the initial program load, but um, all of our uh, uh, loading of the operating system in some cases. So, you know, that can really get us into trouble. Um, the, uh, well, uh, again, um, if and we probably are um, in in data center operations, and as I say, you know these days it's it's probably a uh, a server farm, uh, a bunch of essentially microcomputers, uh, racks and stacks, and um, so uh, capturing traffic to and from the server. Uh, you know, not just pretending to be the server, but um, in some cases, just, you know, looking at what requests we are making and, uh, you know, transmitting that information to an attacker to uh, heighten their attack, to, uh, you know, simply observe what we are doing. Uh, lots of things that, that can be done there. Um, they can... Uh, modify uh, those requests and, and the user data that flows from that. Uh, so a, a number of options of different types of attacks uh, that we can have uh, in these situations and that we, we have to be careful about. Um, uh, stealing. Uh, the... Um, identification and, and password, either in capturing the uh, traffic that we have between us and, and the server, or in terms of just simply capturing the uh, server's password file so that they can do dictionary attacks, uh, rainbow attacks, brute force attacks, whatever uh, their, their preference is and, and what's appropriate to what we do. Oh, talking about vulnerabilities, uh, we've got some work to do here, <laughs> but I'm not carrying a chainsaw, so I have to let the other guys know about that. And, uh, yeah, anyways, we will uh, go on then with additional uh, security vulnerabilities. <laughs>